Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're here for the first time, hi, my name is Bufari Imoyayo and I'm a registered nurse. On this channel, I talk about nursing, healthcare and my lifestyle generally as a nurse. And in today's video, I am going to be simplifying anti-hypertensive medications. If you're new here and you want to join the family, click on the subscribe button to join us and also the bell icon so you get the notification whenever I drop another video. So let's get straight into today's topic. So in simple terms, antihypertensive medications are drugs that are used to regulate the blood pressure, specifically lowering them. So when the blood pressure is too high, the drugs used to bring them down, are basically antihypertensive. So today I am going to be describing the mechanism of action and examples of some common antihypertensive medications that you will come across. Now there are a number of classes of medications that are used to treat hypertension and a very simple way to remember these drugs are a b c d so a will stand for angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors you also have a for angiotensin 2 receptor blockers alpha blockers all within a for drugs under b you have the beta blockers for c you have the calcium channel blockers you also have drugs that are classified as central agonists for d you have diuretics and vasodilators i know vasodilators starts from the word v but you know if you take into consideration the word dilators you can also use the alphabet d to remember them so we have a b c d so starting with the angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors let's go back to physiology a little bit angiotensin converting enzyme is responsible for converting angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2 and once angiotensin 2 is present in the body what it does basically is that it increases blood pressure to mechanisms like vasoconstriction it causes the body to reabsorb sodium and water a lot because there's release of antidiuretic hormone as well as aldosterone and all this comes together to increase blood pressure so what so let's assume that i am angiotensin converting enzyme it means that if i am not present in the body there would be no way angiotensin 1 would be converted to angiotensin 2, causing the blood pressure to rise. So what angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor does is that it stops me, the angiotensin converting enzyme, from converting angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2, and there is no blood pressure increase. That is a very simple way of describing the mechanism of action of angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors. Examples of drugs that fall under angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors include drugs like lisinopril, and enalapril and you will realize that these two examples i mentioned have the suffix p r i l so the suffix pril is a good way to remember drugs that fall under this class now talking about the angiotensin 2 receptor blockers initially when i was talking about angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors i mentioned the fact that angiotensin 2 will cause the blood pressure to increase because of vessel constriction that it will cause eventually and it will also cause the body to reabsorb sodium and water increasing the plasma circulation volume and causing blood pressure to increase so it means that if we stop angiotensin 2 from doing its work then the blood pressure will not increase so let's assume that i am angiotensin 2 and it is required for me to bind with my receptor before i can cause the blood pressure to rise what angiotensin 2 receptor blockers are going to do is to stop me as angiotensin 2 from binding to my receptors so i cannot do my work therefore blood pressure is going to drop so like i said in the beginning angiotensin 2 converting enzyme inhibitors stop angiotensin 1 from coming to angiotensin 2 so if there is also angiotensin 2 present, angiotensin 2 receptor blockers will stop angiotensin 2 from combining with the friends or the receptors from increasing blood pressure. It is that simple. Examples of drugs that fall under angiotensin 2 receptor blockers are losartan and valsartan. And if you notice, they all have the suffix sartan. So the suffix sartan is a way to remember drugs that fall under angiotensin 2 receptor blockers. Now the third A, we'll be talking about alpha blockers. 
on your blood vessels there are things called alpha receptors and what they do is that they bind to epinephrine and norepinephrine please pardon my pronunciation english is not my first language so what they do is that they bind to epinephrine and norepinephrine then cause vasoconstriction and remember one of the major things that causes blood pressure to increase is when there is a lot of resistance peripheral resistance to the blood that the heart is pumping so when the blood vessels become more narrow the heart has to pump with a higher force causing the blood pressure to increase so ideally alpha alpha receptors they are on the blood vessels right we've already established that what these receptors do is that they bind to epinephrine and norepinephrine once it is released in the body and cause the vessel constriction to occur and blood pressure increases. So what alpha blocker does is that it stops these receptors, these alpha receptors from binding to epinephrine and norepinephrine, more or less just contradicting the whole physiology or stopping the process from happening. So if alpha receptors can no longer bind to epinephrine and norepinephrine, that means blood pressure is going to be reduced. It is that simple. So now that you're done with classes of drugs that are falling under the A, let's go to B. So for B, I said beta blockers. So how do beta blockers actually cause reduction in blood pressure? Earlier, I mentioned that we have alpha receptors on the blood vessels, right? Now we have beta receptors on the heart muscle. And what these beta receptors do is that they bind to epinephrine and norepinephrine, just like the alpha receptors, and they cause the stroke volume and cardiac output to increase, and this will increase blood pressure. So what do you think the beta blockers are going to do? Simple, they are just going to stop the beta receptors from binding to epinephrine and not epinephrine, causing the blood pressure to drop. So it's very, very simple. What these drugs just do is either stop something from being converted to another thing that will increase blood pressure or stop one receptor from recognizing something that it's supposed to combine with and increase blood pressure so it is very very simple it is not difficult at all examples of medication that fall under beta blockers include metropolol and labetalol and notice the suffix lol so the suffix lol is a very simple way to remember drugs that fall under beta blockers now let's move to c where we talk about the calcium channel blockers Calcium channels are present on the smooth muscles of our blood vessels and also on cardiac muscles. So the calcium channels can be likened to like doors, like your front door in your house. So what this calcium channel does is that once they are opened, they allow calcium to enter into them and they enter either into the blood vessels or into the cardiac muscles and causes vasoconstriction. And we have already established in earlier portions of this video that once there is basal constriction, the blood pressure is going to increase. So what do you think calcium channel blockers are going to do? They're just basically going to stop those calcium channels or those calcium doors from opening and giving access to calcium. And once this happens, blood pressure is going to drop. Again, stopping something from happening is just what majority of these hypertensive medications do so you can see that they are not very difficult to understand and they are very 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 straightforward examples of medications that fall under calcium channel blockers include mifedipine amylodipine and micadipine notice that they all have the suffix d-i-p-i-n-e-s the pins so whenever you see the pins you remember that these are calcium channel blockers that help to reduce blood pressure finally let's talk about diuretics there are different types of diuretics you have the loop diuretics you have the thiazides and you also have the potassium ferrin diuretics but i'm just going to be talking about a general overview of how diuretics can help to drop blood pressure in this video probably in the future i'll make a more detailed video on diuretics now let's go back to our anatomy of the kidney remember that the kidney contains some tiny structures known as the nephron and one of the functions of the nephron is reabsorption of water sodium or any other nutrient that the body needs and stopping them from going out through urine so basically the job of diuretics is to stop the nephrons from reabsorbing water and sodium because if there is a lot of water and sodium in the body the plasma circulating volume is going to be high and there will be increased blood pressure so what diuretic medications do is that they stop the nephron from doing this reabsorption thing they make sure that the body excretes enough water and enough sodium dropping the plasma circulating volume and reducing blood pressure it's it's 
very very straightforward so it's just like stopping something from happening that is what all these ft hypertensive medications do a very common example of diuretics is the drug furosemide now you can read more about all these medications because there are a lot of examples of medications that fall under the various classes that I mentioned in this video. But I hope now you have a very simple, straightforward understanding of the various classes of antihypertensive medications that I mentioned in this video. And if you want to watch more of my videos, click this playlist here and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!